hey guys welcome again to my youtube channel if it's your first time here you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber you're welcome so without wasting much of our time let's dive right into this tutorial so i will start by ruling my starting point so that's my starting point then the next thing i'm going to do is to measure out from my shoulder point to my half length and i'll be using 15 but i'm not going to just mark 15 out i'll add one inch allowance to make it 16 for sewing allowance so i have 16 so i'm going to go ahead and rule out the 16. So after that, I will go ahead and mark out my shoulder measurement. And the shoulder is 15. I will divide it by 2. After dividing it by 2, I will add 0 0.5 allowance for sewing. But I'm not just going to mark it straight. I slanted it down by 1 inch. You know, the shoulder is not straight. So... I'm going to connect it to the neck area just as you see then for the arm o i'm going to be using 7.5 i'll go ahead and rule it out horizontally then for my boss point i'll be using 10 and for my under boss is 12 and a half for for the 10 i'll mark it out and also draw it out horizontally for the 12 and a half which is the under boss i'll also mark it out and draw it out horizontally for my arm o i'll just bring it down from the shoulder slant to the chest line to get my arm o curve i will just go up one inch from the angle just as you see me do and if you have your french curve just place it there it will give you a very nice curve then i'll go ahead and label the first one i have cl which is the chest line followed by the bp which is the bust point followed by the under bust and my half length i'll go ahead to mark out the bust pan that is from nipple to nipple measurement which is eight I will divide it by two then i have four i'll mark it out on all the lines from the chest line down to the half length then i will connect the points together on my half length i'll go in by one inch then out two by one inch on the other on the burst i will do the same on my boss points, I'll come down 0 0.5. I'll mark it. Then I'll connect the under boss with the half length together. Then I'll take from the under boss down to the 0 0.5 I came down with. I'm going to be using my cuff ruler. To connect the points together I'll do the same for both sides for the upper area of this dress I'll be using this cord lace so I'll go ahead now and mark out where I want the cord lace to start and to stop so i want my cut list to be from the neck to 6.5 downward so i'll go ahead and mark it 6.5 downward after that i'm going to extend my vertical line to the new line i just ruled just as you see me do then i will go in and out 0 
from the left side and the uh, right side 0 0.5 then I'll connect the 0 0.5 down to the vertical line just as you see me do slantly connect it on both sides then guys as you can see we already have this curve that will accommodate the bust part so we can if you want to use breast pad with this now you can cut out a perfect breast pad then for the neck area which we'll be using next i'm going to go ahead now and um, cut out and i'll be using sweetheart's neck so from that 6.5 we drill down, I came down another 0 0.5. From there I will slant it to get my sweet tart neck. You can as well come down for the neck, for the sweet tart neck, 1 inch, 1.5 inch, even 2 inches. is based on, on how deep you want your sweet tarts to be. And you can see as I'm connecting it to the ammo area because I actually want the cordless to take the part of the ammo. But if you have your curve ruler, just place it to give you a perfect curve there. But this is just a free hand sketching sketch and just mark out with your free hand. After that, I'm going to go ahead and mark out the body measurement I have on the fabric then for the bust i have 34 i'm going to divide it by four so 34 divided by four i have eight and half that eight from 8.5 then remember this that measurement i'm going to cut it out so i measure it i have one inch so i'm going to add the one inch to 8.5 making it 9.5 then i'll go ahead and mark out 9.5 yes i'm shading out this because i'm going to cut it out later and for the bust part i have one so i already added it to the 8.5 i have so i'm going to mark out 9.5 i'm going to be adding two inches allowance why because i'm cutting this on fabric directly for the underboss i'm going to do the same dividing the measurements and i have 27 for circumference of the underboss dividing it by four i have 6.75 so i just approximated it to seven after that i also measure the that I have which is 2 inches I added the 2 inches to the 7 I have 7 I have 9 then I mark out the 9 after that I added my 2 inches allowance I did the same for the half length part I also have 27 for my circumference dividing it by 4 approximating it to 7 then measuring that the dots I have two plus my sewing allowance I have two so everything I marked out exactly the same way I did for underboss and I'm going to go ahead and connect these points together just before I cut it I'm going to determine how the neck is going to be remember we are going to use net so I'll go ahead and cuff my net with three inches so i want the wideness to be three inches and the depth to be three inches so i'm using three by three for the neck area and i'll go ahead and cuff it together joining the two points together so just before i cut it out i decide to add 0 0.5 inches addition to the length so i will have free allowance to join both the neck and the net together with the fabric 
since I'm cutting it straight on the fabric so you can see how I'm cutting everything out to give my ammo area a perfect honey relaxed fitting sleeve so I'm going to go in after I'm going to divide the ammo part by two then at the center I'll go in 0 0.5 0 0.5 then I'm going to slant it up and down then cut out the S's I have at the middle just look at what I'm doing exactly and do the same doing this help your sleeve to lie very well and making the ammo sits very perfectly but you only do this for the front part area leaving the back normal remember when i was drafting out this i said i want my net to enter my ammo area and that's why i cuff it down to the ammo part but if you don't want yours you can just slant it you can just cut it out straight from that six So after cutting out the front part, this is what I have and while sewing it, exactly I'm going to sew it, just ensuring the right side is facing right side. So let's go ahead to cut the back part. So I'll mark out one inch for my zipper allowance and I'll take my ruler and roll it down. After that, I'm going to mark out my starting point and exactly that point is my starting point and I'm going to mark out my half length remember I use 16 and half I will do the same for the back 16 and half I label my zipper area then I mark out my shoulder measurement dividing my shoulder measurement by 2 and adding 0 0.5 I have 8 inches and I slant it down by 1 inch I'm going to connect the line slantly to the neck area. Then I'll go ahead and take my ammo measurement, the same thing I used for the front part, which is 7.5, and I mark it down. So I'll connect the shoulder slants to the chest line I rule. After that, I'll go up one inch for my ammo curve just the same way I did for the front part after that I'm going to mark out my underboss which is 12 and half and after marking it out I will roll it horizontally then the next thing I'm going to do is dividing the circumference of my boss by 4 just the same way I did and adding 2 inches for my allowance Remember, I'm going to minus the zipper, it's not included. So as you can see where I place the ruler, the taper, after the zipper allowance. So I will add my allowance, the same thing I did for the underbust, dividing the circumference by four and adding allowance. Then I did the same too for the down part dividing the circumference by four and adding in my allowance then I'm going to connect the points together the cord lace is just for the front part so I'm not going to be using cord lace for the back so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and mark out the neck area so for the neck I'll be using three by two three to this side and the depth two inches you know i use three the same for the front part too so i'll use the same three does that the length the depth is different so here i'm using two and i'll go ahead and cut it out so for the dots 
I will just mark out the dart here but I'm not going to be cutting it out when I turn it with lining then I will just hold the dart I'm just marking out the bust point which is 4 inches I'll connect this line together vertically and when I turn it already when I'm stitching it, turn it already with lining I'm going to hold it just the same way I'm marking it out that is how I'm going to hold it from the down part then straight up for the down parts I'll be cutting both the front and the back together so this is for the back I have it open and I've my fabric is on fold and I'm placing another one on it which is the one I'll be using to cut out the front part I'll go ahead and mark out my zipper from the down one and I, I'm going to be marking out one inch I'll mark it out after marking it out I'll take my ruler and connect the line together I'm going to be I'm going to be cutting out the length and the full length of the gown is 42 and from that 42 we already cut out 15 inches which is for sh from shoulder to half length so just before i do that i'm going to mark out my starting point so that is my starting point after that i'm going to place my ruler just 15 you know the 15 the one we cut for the upper area so i'll place my ruler there and mark out the 42 straight on the fabric i'm not just going to leave it 42 i will add two inches allowance for folding because when i'll be turning it with lining so i will add two inches downward so that it will enable me to turn it with lining So now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark out from my waistline to my hip line and I'm going to be using 9 inches. I once said in my video, in my previous video, you can use 10, you can use 8, depends on how tall the, the person you are making dress for is. After that I will label, so the first one I have my waistline. The second one is the hip line and the last one is the main length which is 42 plus the last line which is the additional 2 inches we added. Then the other line there is for zipper, the vertical line down. So after that I will divide my waist measurement by 4. And the waist measurement is still 27. 27 divided by 4, I have 6.75. I approximated it to 7. So I mark it out 7 and I added my allowance with it, which is 1.5 for the allowance. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to divide the circumference of my hip by 4 and the hip is 36 dividing it by 4 I have 8 then I will add my sewing allowance which is one and half yes I'm using one and half in previous one I used to because I'll be joining so many things at the front part but this one is just straight so I use just one and half after joining everything I will have like one inch for allowance left in the dress after that 
Then for the knee part, which is the main length, I'll just measure every anything I have on my hip line and just and remove one inch, just one inch. After removing the one inch, I'll mark it, and that will be enough. Will be good for my perfect for my knee measurement because the gown is three quarter gown. Then I'll connect these three points together. After that, I'll go ahead and cut out my fabric. So this is what I have after I'm done cutting out everything. So I'll open up and the first one I'm opening up now is the front part of the down area. You can see it. Then the second one is the back part. You can see I have it in two because it has zipper allowance. Then I'll go ahead and cut out my fabric on the lining so i just place it on my lining folded and cut it out on the lining for all the pieces i'll do the same cut everything out on the lining then for the down part remember i added two inches to the main length so I'm not going to cut in the lining together with the 2 inches I added. So before I cut the lining, I'll just fold up the 2 inches I added on the fabric. I'll fold it up. Then I'll cut the lining exact length of the dress, which is the 42, minus the 2 inches I added. So that when I'm turning it up, I'll use the 2 inches to turn it up. When I'm sewing this thing, I'm going to show us what I'm what I'm saying here. If you are yet to understand, just keep watching the video. And if you have watched this video to this point, thank you. And hope you are enjoying the video. Give it a thumbs up. And if you have any question, leave it down in the comment box below. I'll be there to answer any of our questions thank you and please don't so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel on the notification bell beside to get engaged in this channel so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to cut out my mm, cord lace so i just carried the fabric i drafted out already and i'll place it on the cord lace and if you can see i leave some spaces for the cord lace so that I will have little allowance to join everything together. I will take it now to the sewing machine and show us how I am going to stitch everything together. So this is the front part. I will make the, the front to face the front. I will stitch it together. The same thing I'm doing for the right side, I'm going to do for the left side too. And if you want to add breast part to yours, I have a video where I showed how to sew something like this with breast part. I'll link it down in the description box below. You can go ahead and watch that. And if you want to sew yours, even without breast part, I advise you to use your gum stain, clothes gum. It will give it a very nice fitting then after joining these parts together if you have your tailor m take it and use it to iron it open up the sewing this stitched allowance and iron it very well it makes it look more perfect even without the breast pad Exactly what I did to this, I'm going to do also to the lining. I'm going to sew everything together. 
then just before i saw the cut lace to the my to my fabric i decided to use both the net and the fabric place on each other for the upper parts of my gown instead of the cord lace alone i'm going to be using both the net the cord lace and the fabric so what i just did is i took the fabric i drafted out initially to cut out another one then i added 0.5 inches on the down part of it so that it will be equal with the cord lace and after that i just joined it together and this is how i joined the neck neck area together i make the right side of the lace to face the wrong side of the fabric for the next side and i joined it together and this is me stitching it together so by the time i turn the ank the fabric under the cord lace the right part will be showing at the back of the cord lace i hope you understand this after turning out the neck with the cord lace i just stitch the net the cord lace and the fabric the ankara fabric together then what i'm going to do now is to connect the down parts with the cord lace side i located the center you know the center that has the sweet tart as my starting point i'll stitch it right and to the left so this is what i have after i've connected the upper parts together so i'll go ahead now and cover up everything with the lining exactly how i located the center i'll do the same i'll connect it ensuring the right side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the fabric then i'll sew it right on the left side also after that I'll go ahead and give it a very thorough ironing just before I turn it inside out from the down part. I didn't stitch the down part and that is where I turned it out. I'll give it an open stitches. Later on, I'll weave it when I'm done sewing. So the next thing I'm going to do is to connect the down part together with the half length and this is what i have after i'm done connecting everything together just before i was done making this dress i just thought of putting something on the waist part because it looks so simple i just don't want it to look too simple like this so i decided to put a drape on it as you're seeing it now so if you're interested i'm going to show you how i achieved this drape in this video so this is the fabric i'm going to be using for the drape and this part I'm measuring now is the part I'm going to pleat, pleat on the fabric on my gown. So I have it as 30 inches. So I'm going to printing, pleating this part, which is 30 inches on the gown. Then the length of the drape is 39. So I will show us how I achieve this. Before you start to drape you can just take this edge to your sewing machine and stitch it down i'm going to do that but later so stitch it down do the same for the other edges the down parts and the other side so after that on my half length i just came up like one inch above the half length and that is my starting point for the drape The second thing I determined there is where I want the drape to fall. Is it to the right or to the left? So you can decide, but it's more preferred to make it drape on the left side. So I'm going to be pleating it, pleating this on my right side 
then it will come down to my left side i will also secure it with my pin so i have my pin already on my fabric You can just wash along and see exactly how I have shaped this. You can pleat to the right, you can pleat to the left, you can do open and close splitting, any one you want. And if you want it to pleat all through, then when you pleat this one, when you come to the center, you also pleat and tag it down with your pin. And if you know you can get this accurately, with your sewing machine, you don't need to start using pin to pin it down first before you sew it. You can just take it to your machine as you are pleating it, you are stitching it the same. To make your pleating, the draping more beautiful, it's preferable to use equal spacing. So if you are using one inch for the pleating, just continue with the one inch and if you want it smaller than that, continue with whatever you want to use not one part bigger the other one is smaller it's also important for you to determine where you want the drape to stop so for me my own i want it to stop one inch after the hip line remember my hip line is nine so one inch after the hip line it means ten so my draping is starting one inch above the half length remember i came up above the half length one inch also one inch after the hip line so i'll take it to my sewing machine to stitch it to secure the pleating before i turn it with the back side area so after i'm done doing that now i'm going to marking out my body measurements no allowance on my fabric and now i'm going to be giving my dress a perfect fitting so for the bust part i'm going to divide my circumference by two without adding any allowance on my waist part i'm going to be dividing my circumference by two without adding any allowance then even my waist area i remove 0.5 for my main allowance for my main circumference to so give it a very nice tightening effect on my waist area on my hip i divided my circum the circumference of my hip measurement by two then any everything that after dividing by two whatever i have a minus one on the knee part and i mark it out then i connect it to the hip area so that is all guys for this gown so i just took it to the sewing machine attached it with the back part and attach my basic sleeve also if you watched this video to this point thank you please give it a thumbs up and see you in my next video bye shalom